Tristan Siliaser, a Pisay ZRC scholar, and in this wonderful day, you will learn something interesting with me. Do you know who is the father of our national language? O ama ng ating wikang pambansa? Hmm. Yes, you are right. It's Manuel Luis Quezon. With that being said, let us absorb Manuel L. Quezon's greatest contribution which made him notable during the American colonization and Japanese occupation in our country. Manuel L. Quezon was a Filipino statesman, leader of the independence movement, and the first president of the Philippine Commonwealth established under the U.S. Tutelage in 1935. Quezon was a son of a school teacher and small landholder of Tagalog descent on the island of Luzon. He cut short his law studies at the University of Santo Tomas in Manila in 1899 to participate in the struggle for independence against the United States led by Emilio Aguinaldo. After Aguinaldo surrendered in 1901, Quezon, however, returned to the university, obtained his degree, and practiced law for a few years. Convinced that the only way to independence was through cooperation with the United States, he ran for governor of Tayabas province in 1905. Once elected, he served for two years before elected a representative in 1907 to the newly established Philippine Assembly. The act gave the Philippines greater autonomy and provided for the creation of a bicameral national legislature modeled after the U.S. Congress. Quezon resigned as commissioner and returned to Manila to be elected to the newly formed Senate in 1916. He subsequently served as its president until 1935. In 1922, he gained control of the Nacionalista Party which had previously been led by his rival, Sir Yos Menya. Quezon fought for passage of the Tidings Macduffie Act on 1934, which provided for full independence for a Philippines 10 years after the creation of a constitution and the establishment of a Commonwealth government that would be the forerunner of an independent republic. Quezon was elected president of the newly formulated Commonwealth on September 17, 1935. As president, he reorganized the island's military defense, aided by U.S. General Douglas MacArthur as his special advisor, tackled the huge problems of landless peasants in the countryside who still worked as tenants on large estates, promoted the settlement and development of the large southern island of Mindanao, and fought graft and corruption in the government. Quezon was re-elected president in 1941. After Japan invaded and occupied the Philippines in 1942, he went to the United States, where he formed the government in exile, served as a member of the Pacific War Council, signed the first declaration of the United States against the fascist nations, and wrote his autobiography. The Good Fight, 1946. Despite the fact that Manuel L. Quezon did not have the opportunity to celebrate the country's sovereignty after all his dedication to conferring the Philippines' absolute autonomy from both American and Japanese invasion and command in the country, he had prominently impressive reputation in the history of this country that was still introduced to us today. Quezon was a well-known president and entity who also worked for our independence rights. I hope you have gained a lot of knowledge from me today. Once again, I'm Mark Tristan Yasser from Section Emerald. And keep in mind that the informed ones always shine out. Thank you and have a delightful day.